everybody my name is angie morenga you're watching just angie it's the voices of the ecclesia we started an amazing sermon series with uh, pastor Maridi wanjao uh, from the mavuno movement and um we're talking about how to create movements and global movements and how east africa requires um a movement we need to come together learn the art of following and moving towards what the commission that jesus christ left for us so yes. today we want to talk about barriers because i i love that you know i love when pastor M preaches he usually has he has usually four points and then you know then he closes me i always say me i'm everywhere i i don't even know where <laughs> beginning end i was like where was i again and i come back but i'm glad he lets me be i always say pastor M, please me point four points i don't have i just got to flow with the spirit and move so I love that. So barriers to fam to 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 movement um yeah, yeah. or to becoming a family because yeah. that's the whole idea of becoming a family. Yes. So today you're going to tell us we're going to discuss why is it hard from this region of East Africa to form cohesive church families that can change the world and how do we overcome hey, the barriers of individualism? Kwanza offense. Mm -hmm. We have so much offense in church, strife and criticism that keep our faith churches from moving to yeah, the next level. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And you know, yeah. Pastor, even before you say that, I've just thought, you know, that's the same thing because we alluded to being corporate, isn't it? Mm. That's the same thing that's happening in corporates. That's the yeah, same corporate yeah, yeah, yeah. culture. Absolutely. Offense, strife. Yeah. I vote with my feet. And I leave. Our company I small. cause people to yeah. come against his leader. I mean, the, the craziness in the corporate world, yeah. which is what yeah. we have transferred also to the church. Well, I don't know if the church has transferred it to us, <laughs> but that's what is moving the, the world and it's not working for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. so Karibu Pastor. Yeah, you know, it's so good to be here and uh, thanks again for having me. Mm -hmm. I'm so delighted to be here. And you know, right. you're you're right. We have a reaction to to being to being to following yes. and to being a family. And mm. part of it is because of our issues. I mean, we can talk about that a bit more, but uh, the issues we've seen in our own families and maybe even in our spiritual families. Mm. We've seen abuse. Mm. Somebody mentioned that. Abuse. We've seen abuse of fatherhood. Mm. We've seen um, parents who are who are abusive, who are absent, mm -hmm. who are just not too busy for yeah. their children. Yeah, who are not present uh, at all. We've seen uh, mm. uh, national leaders who don't care about yeah. us, who don't care about the people they are leading. They're all about increasing. Themselves. Even in the middle of the worst economic recession, you'll they always find parliaments themselves. trying to increase their Salaries. benefits. And you're always like, are these guys crazy? Yeah. Uh, we've seen it in church. And we've seen um, just those churches where you have to you have to call me dad, you have to call me mom, you have to. And it's like, we're, we're so, so paranoid in this part of the world because we've seen the abuse of leadership. Mm. But I always tell people that the solution to bad fatherhood is not no fatherhood. It's not new fatherhood. It's not no fatherhood. No fatherhood. Yes, yes. It's, it's a not good that it's fatherhood. good fatherhood. So we have to find good fathers. Because we've run away from leaders. it because we say because we've seen bad fathers, yes. let's just not have fathers. Let's just not have them. That's not But that's the not the solution because yes, then that agreed. creates a whole different problem. Oh, it in does. Itself. Orphans. I thought it we were talking about orphans. Absolutely does. You are now an orphan. You are running around and you're a spiritual absolutely. orphan. So the solution to bad fathers is not no fathers. That's a very powerful It's good pastor. fathers. It's good fathers. And good mothers. So I, I really do feel like especially the church in the West that mm. we model from, the mm -hmm. American church, especially when you watch a lot of Christian TV, mm -hmm. they come from a very independent culture. Very. Where it's like but, every man for himself and yeah, God for God for all. us all. I but, mean, you know, have you ever noticed, theirs, again, uh, there are no global church movements that come in, out of America. Imagine that come out of the US. As much as they're the most powerful nation and have been for the, the last hundred years. The most visible, I think, with all their no televangelists. global movements None. of that churches that have come from there. That's Why? Crazy. It's because of these things. Huh? It's independence. It's that thing. It's about that is me in us. and my numbers and Absolutely. who I'm growing, Absolutely. and that is it. And, and then the next guy comes, he doesn't even want to acknowledge me. He starts his own <laughs> thing like he's the one who <laughs> invented himself. So we have this thing where it's yeah. like I'm a self made man. Yes. There is no ah, such thing as a self made There's no such man. thing. Pastor, there's no <laughs> such thing as a self-made no man or thing. woman. Absolutely. In case you think it is, even there's nothing like self-made. How? There's nothing like that. How? I even say first of all, self-made. You don't even know the date you are leaving this earth and you are self-made. How self are you? How if you, you are self-made, you should be able to control even when you are leaving. <laughs> Tell us when you are going. Yeah, but you see, that's a wow. picture we get. All these self-made entrepreneurs oh, who came out oh. of nowhere, built oh, themselves oh, from oh, scratch. Oh, and oh, there's oh, always oh. never an acknowledgement of the fact that you're part of a context. Yes. Somebody poured Somebody into poured Somebody did it. Before somebody you. did. Somebody raised you. Somebody, somebody raised on you. a bare minimum. You know? If we bring the Kenyan context, they took you for immunization, to, and you got all the shots. You know, they, you, know yeah. you are here because, because somebody, somebody did, did something. something. You know, somebody did so, something. So that lack of, a, and that, those are the barriers now. 
What are the things you're talking about? Some of the barriers that keep us from ever becoming yeah. the family, yeah. the cohesive families God wants us to be so we can change the world. Mm. The barriers that will keep me from following another person mm -hmm. and acknowledging them as my mm. spiritual father. The barriers mm. that will keep my own people from choosing me as mm. a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. One of them is the independent spirit. Yep. That's a huge one. That's and we're just talking about that one. right now. So independent. And it starts in the Garden of Eden. Because yes. the, the serpent himself is the one who says to, to Eve, yeah. God knows that if you do what he's saying, you you're going to become, become like him. Like and she's him. already like him. She's made in <laughs> exactly. his image and in his likeness. But the suspicion, like, just, the suspicion, the suspicion of suspicion. God is trying to take take advantage of you. Or and that he's holding something back from exactly. you. You know, that's another thing we have. I don't exactly. know who had that from the other day. That we feel... That this, that's what he felt. She felt, ah, and there's maybe, something, there's he's, something hiding he's hiding from me. Yeah. He doesn't want me yeah. to become like exactly. him. And she's already And if like I him. follow him, I won't be everything I was meant to be. Oh, something Pastor, about me is so going powerful. to be robbed from me. Oh. So, I mean, you watch all the movies we are watching, oh. all the Jack Bowers, all the James Bonds, all the, you know, they never do what they're supposed to do. The heroes in the movies, oh, wow. by the way, they never follow orders. Huh? They always do their <laughs> thing and then they always win. And you know those Jack Bowers, they didn't start with Jack Bowers, they started in the Bible. You read the book of, Day I mean, <laughs> Kings, you read, you can get caught, look at Job, <laughs> David's, David's general. That guy is Jack Bauer personified. <laughs> David tells him, do this. Job does his own thing. I mean, Parker the king cannot even lead him anymore. You know, he's the one who's leading his own king. He's so And that's how Christians today are. That's how we are. It's like, I can't be told. I cannot be told and I cannot be led. And I, I shall not be, be led. led. You know? I, I also know. Until huh? the king is like, you know what? I can't even manage these sons of Zeruiah. They're too mm. much for me. You can even see the, the poor king. He can't even lead his own generals. Oh they have God. a mind of their own. And ultimately, I mean, David is so grieved that Actually, you, know, you remember one of the things he tells Solomon to do is to go and kill that job. Oh. It's like like the guy who's been his general his whole life, his inheritance to his son, go kill that general of mine. Oh it's like this God. guy has wearied me my whole life, life. because Job Imagine never knew how, how to follow sad. this independent spirit. And we have so many pastor jobs in our churches. We have so oh. many uh, oh, job sons in our churches. I was even talking with another pastor. She was telling me some, sometimes you even just get tired. You don't have energy for it. You, you just don't. look at them with compassion <laughs> and say, I can't even deal with you. Yeah, because they just want to hmm? do their own thing. It's like you say, let's fast on, on, on Wednesdays. And no. they're like, no, me, I, me Tuesdays me. the day. I've always yeah. fasted my whole life. <laughs> let's pray at 4.30 <laughs> in the morning as a church. Ah, ah, no. ah, ah, me, I've always oh. prayed at midnight. I'm God speaks to me at midnight. <laughs> it's like they can't follow somebody <laughs> else. They want to do it their way. Their way. God speaks to me directly. I don't need to hear, Ooh, you know. Wow, that's Miriam and, and Aaron. Was it Miriam and Aaron? Who said, Quandi, this Moses Absolutely. is the only one who God is, is, he talking, that God to? is talking to? Even as God yeah. speaks to us. And remember mean? what happens to her. She catches leprosy because and God is And who prays like, for her? This is you the see now the disturbance of God. Who prays for her? You know, that's what I like to ask God. You can't do this. Yeah. She's, to she's talking against the man of God. She gets she leprosy. Gets and then the same Moses man of God, God to has to pray for her now. No, this is not the role. Yeah. Huh? So, so this whole thing about the fact that you know, so for her, true. she's judging him based on you're my kid brother. Yes, um, I've been alive for longer. In fact, I'm the one who saved your life. I'm the yes. one who made sure you yes. got to the Pharaoh's palace. Yes, yes. So why should I be listening to you? I'm yeah. even a prophetess. Yes. So why should why shouldn't God speak to me directly? <laughs> and I'm a worshiper. I lead and with I'm the tambourines. Exactly. Yeah. I'm the I'm the I'm the person bringing the presence yeah, of so God. So she has an independent spirit, and, and I feel bring... like this thing is so real in our churches and today. Amen. And let me just give another example. It's also the tithers. Eh? The biggest tithers. Those big ones. This church will be collapsing if, the church. <laughs> if it is was not for me. And yeah. the, the, the yeah. seed that I'm bringing to this place, this church will be collapsing. Yeah. Remove your seed. God will bring another. Remove Absolutely. it. He'll even bring 10 more. Absolutely. Please perish. Even that's where they said that time. Simon said, you and your money, may you perish, perish with, it. with yeah. it. Absolutely. You are not upholding Absolutely. the church. This is yeah. this is the kingdom of it's God. Kingdom. He said, I will build my church and the gates, the gates of hell will not prevail against. Prevail. So even yeah. having an attitude that you're a great supporter and that you're supporting God in his work, that is more no. for your benefit it, than it is for God's benefit. Is. And if you move out of it the way, is. God will bring an attitude. Do not play games. And with here's you. the thing. If you're an independent minded follower of Jesus, the people you raise will also, also be independent. Be independent. They also so give you. Remember, we're talking about why there are no East Africa movement, global movement, mm -hmm. because every pastor raises independent. First of all, I'm independent. I don't acknowledge I have a spiritual father mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. So the people I raise will never acknowledge me as a spiritual father. Never. So guess what? We're all fragmenting. Every generation, there are two new churches mm -hmm. starting. None of them will ever become. They become big for their generation, and then they die. Then they die. Which is the fate of African businesses, isn't it? Yes. Kamau even and African sons business. never when reaches Kamau sons. Passes, it ne yeah, it never gets sons to sons. Sons fight and destroy, and oh. then they move on. But it's Why is that? Because we don't taught. have generational thinking. Because mm. we're so independent in our mm. mind. Yeah, we, we feel like if I make, if I say Pastor Angie is my spiritual mother, mm. I've made myself small. Yes. 
you know. And uh, maybe I'm acknowledging there's something I don't have. And yes. And that's exactly. what we don't want to do. We don't want to we, wanna, we have everything. We don't want to acknowledge that there's something that she has for me. And and for me I looked at the west because I've been mentored by churches in the west yes. to be honest. Yeah. Huh? And I looked at them and I studied and I said this is where we are becoming like you. Mm. This is why we have no global movements because mm. you people don't follow anybody. Mm. So even us we're not following anybody mm. and that's why we're never going to become big. Mm. And I said no, that's not our portion in Jesus name. So okay. independence number 2 is offense. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Spirit of offense. What? You know? That one is carried like crazy. Yeah. You know there are people, let me also be a bit real for myself. So there are people that uh, we you know when you relate with people and then there's a place where now you get there's a separation and people yeah. are offended. I used to love there's one person they particular leader they'd go to and I love the question he'd ask them. He'd say, "Pastor Angie has done this, yeah? So you're offended with her?" Yeah. But before we agree, we talk about her offense, can we please talk about all the good things? All mm -hmm. the amazing things that Machine. she has done Absolutely. first, then now we can discuss this offense. Yeah. Because yeah. it seems the offense always takes precedent. Yeah. It it negates all the things that, all the good things that, that have happened. And even I feel even for family, someday I need to talk to somebody out there. You may have issues with your parents, your uh, your Kabisa. own biological parents. Kabisa. But first remember the most, your first way you're here alive and well because they had something to do with that yeah, foundation. Yeah. So I think it's very important that even as we talk about offense, that we, we one offensive thing blocks out everything else it that was out. good. And it cuts us off from inheritance. Think yes, about the guys amazing. in uh, Jesus's family. Mm -hmm. I think it's Matthew 13, mm -hmm. where he, he cannot even do a miracle in his in own hometown. Nazareth. Was it Nazareth? Yes. Is it what good because can come out of yeah, Nazareth? No, and, and what happens oh. to these guys, they get offended at him. Because they're like, don't we know his brothers? And his don't father. We, didn't we go to school with his sister? And the carpenter. Isn't his father a carpenter? Yes, you know, and it's did like... you train him in carpenter <laughs> forever? <laughs> and so they're like, they get off, and the Bible says they took offense at him. Oh my goodness. They were like, who's this kid to, to try and lecture yeah. us? They took yeah. offense at yeah. him. And many times, oh, offense oh, oh. is not, it's not so much given as taken. As taken. Jesus wasn't trying to offend them. No. He was just being him. Himself. But they took offense. Yes. And they cut themselves off from the thing God was doing in their generation. Many oh, times we disastrous. come from, as you said, we get offended by our parents. Yes. We got offended by something that they said they yeah. did. Mm. And sometimes legitimately, maybe they did something that wasn't right. But unfortunately, our offense that we decide to take on cuts us off from the inheritance we're meant to get from mm -hmm. that family. Mm -hmm. It cuts us off in church as well. Yes. You find that somebody left Bishop so-and-so and went to so-and-so's church and it's like you're looking for a perfect church. There are no perfect churches because they're churches not. are made of imperfect people. Yes, there's no perfect people. And there are no perfect people. And the minute you entered a perfect church, you made it imperfect because you brought you your came. own imperfection you into it. <laughs> so you your own so this whole thing about I'm looking, I mean, I'm offended. Yeah. We, yeah. we have this thing and we just carry offense. Mm. We carry off, and you talk, like, when you talked about the special thing about Kenyans, Kenyans are an offended people. Yeah. And I'm too passive Like, there's no, well. just go on Twitter. Yeah. Ooh, you'll see how offended we are. are. There's no leader who will ever say anything on Twitter and people that just say, say yes, thank you, that it's was like, great. And you we see people talking and you realize, them. You, actually, you think, are you really talking about Raila or are you talking about Ruto here or is or, it about, is it your, about own you? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, your own issues? Yeah, these are your issues These are your own personal issues that you have brought here. But we are such an offended people. Oh my God. It is so true. It is so true. We are a very offended people. You know, it's interesting, Matthew 24 verse 10, it says, and many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. Those are the signs My of the goodness. end times. They will be offended one another? Offend, they will, they be, will offended. be offended, they will betray one another, and they will hate one another. Oh my goodness. And these are the times we live in. And We're that's generation, the hate that comes out on yeah, social media. Absolutely. We're one an offended thing happens generation. And we, start. we cancel that cancel culture. That's what this is. You, you've never even met the guy, but you're so offended I'm because so you heard offended. of something that they did. You don't even have proof that you don't, it to happen. You're not you there. You just had. You are yeah. not there. But you heard that now we're going after Absolutely. this person. So you hear pastor so-and-so, aha, I knew it. These pastors <laughs> cannot be, you know. And that we're just that generation. Am I? Am I? Am I you are. Yeah. We See walk around with such offense mm. and we don't realize that mm. this is actually the enemy's intention to keep us Imagine away from strategy. everything God wants us to be. Yeah. So that's the second spirit. And I actually believe by the way that offense is a spirit. If you it look is, at if you look at uh, Absalom, uh -huh. the guy who ended up doing a coup against his father David. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why did he do it? Offense. Because of offense. Because somebody raped his brother, his half brother raped his sister. His sister. And his father didn't do anything according to so him. So he knew now I'm going so to So he got so offended. Number one, this. he killed that guy. 
Number two, he did a coup against the father. Mm. Why? Because he was so, and he lived in offense until that offense killed him. Mm-hmm. Many of us are just those Absaloms. You know, you're just, we, we are resistant to leadership. Absalom would look at David and say, I can do everything this guy is doing. In fact, I can do it better. I can even do it better. Ah, those ones are full there. In the ah, Pastor, <laughs> ah, Pastor Angie, I can see the way she's ah, preaching. Ah, me, I can preach better Pastor than Angie, that. You know. Pastor Angie, I can preach circles around Absolutely. her. And me, I know, and also I have a note. And I'm yeah. a prophet. I'm also hearing Absolutely. God. Absolutely. What I, I mean, tell people, here's ridiculous. what I tell people. I tell people, you probably can preach better than me. But you're not the one. I'm, but, you know, and I'm not even t- saying this in a facetious way. I'm not the best preacher out there. I don't believe Which I am. Which is true. I'm not Maybe. necessarily the most gifted or anointed person in that way. Mm. But I'm the one God chose to this lead this movement. Yes. You and you said even, God, we, we God did not didn't choose. Have, we didn't, we, I didn't there was no election. Mavuno, there was no yeah, election. There was no election. Even. That God came to consult you, Pastor Angie, who should no, your spiritual father no, be. No, no. He placed you in he that family. He placed me It's there. the same in your biological family. God didn't have an election to decide who your father will be. Yes. He placed you there. In that family. And so I said, because that person is your father, you That's follow true. them. Not because they're more gifted, not because they're taller or stronger or whatever it is. You follow them because that's where God has, has placed, placed you. you. And so that offense thing, it leads to another one, which I call the orphan spirit. Okay. And the yeah, orphan spirit is another so big offense. one. Eh? And I yeah. think, again, for me, people ask me, where is this in the scripture? I'm like, you know what? There's some things you just ex- encounter so many times, back and you're like, this is a spirit. Me, I know it's a spirit. Mm. Because it's a spirit that many people have where it's almost that thing of, I am so, like, I cannot be, it's like I'm cut off spiritually. You know, an orphan in the biological sense mm. is usually not self-made. I mean, something happened to your parents. To your parents. And you, you really can't, you're not responsible for that. It just mm. happened. Mm. But in the spiritual world, many times, the enemy also comes to cut off. You know, God is in the business of fatherhood. Mm. Yes. But the devil is in the business of orphanhood. Mm. He wants the whole world to become an orphanage. Yeah, he so doesn't true. want us following fathers. Mm. And that's why in the last verse mm. of the Old Testament, what does it say? Malachi chapter, chapter 4. I think it's chapter five, chapter four, mm. verse four and five. Mm. It talks about the fact that in when when God comes, He says, "I will I will send Elijah mm. in the last day, yes. and He will reconnect the hearts of, of the father, sons to and fathers, the fathers and, and fathers, fathers to, sons. to sons." And the disobedience. I think it's in now Luke where it says, "And the disobedience to obedience." To obedience. Luke one seventeen. That's the last verse of, of the Old Testament. Of the Old it Testament. ends like that, and then God is silent for four hundred years. Yeah, that's the thing. Four hundred <laughs> years. That was the last one. God is mulling on this often. Turn the hearts of fathers to sons, sons that's to fathers. A, it's like to think obedience. about that for four hundred yeah, years first. Think about it. Then Can what does he do in the New Testament? Matthew chapter one. It says this is a story of Jesus, the, the son. son of Abraham, the son. He of now Abraham. brings a genealogy. He of brings the sons. sonhood, and God Himself becomes a son. Amazing. It's like God is trying to show. You know what? Even I, to live on earth, I have to become a son. Yes. You know? Yes. And he's not son of he's not just son of God, he's son of Abraham, he's son of David. People who he created. Imagine. People who he saw when they were in their mother's womb. Wow. Now he's become their son. He's Imagine. trying to teach us you cannot succeed in life without being, without a, son. being a son. But there's an orphan spirit that has caused us. We look at the painful memories, we look at all the issues, and we just choose to cut ourselves off. We become YouTube Christians. I just attend church from a distance. Let me just get what I want. Yeah. I'm not here to connect with anyone. Mm-hmm. And I'm not planted in the house of God. Oh, you know, we, we, we unplant ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that God, again, in these days, is in the business of son- mm-hmm. sonship. He's yeah. in the business of fatherhood. He mm-hmm. wants to connect us back. So when you, when you said that, Pastor Emma, I just thought about, um, you know, when a lion is going after prey, it always looks at the one that is away from the isolated from, it's the isolated one yes. yeah and then what it just now comes and it does it cuts you off Absolutely. so i'm just thinking about that isolation that we have learned so well yeah is, yeah. Is, yeah. is 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 part of the enemy trying to draw you away yeah. and then he attacks because he cannot attack this whole herd or, or the group or when the prey together. but yeah. this one that is looking isolated the one that's lagging behind the mm-hmm. one that's on the side mm-hmm. that's the one it that doesn't have a mother off. close to it yes has yes. no one protecting or guarding it yes. that's the one that the land and will attack. many christians are in that place that of is vulnerability because we yeah. we're walking by ourselves we're yeah. not connected to a family mm. we think christianity is just this place where i come and receive a, a sermon and go back mm. and do my thing yeah you know and uh, there's also another place i can't remember where i was speaking the other day and i said you know the other thing that um, oh, I think it was at, at uh, my the Women Rising event. I said the other thing that 
it's also something I was feeling I need to catch myself in is that we are, we're very isolated. Sometimes instead of going to want to be with people, I just want to go home and chill. So people will ask you, let's go, let's do this. But you're like, no, yeah. I want to just go chill. Yeah. So there's a yeah. lot of self-isolation. And you see, you can't disciple people place. if you're isolated. You can't. You can't pour your life into people if you're isolated. And you, ca- you don't you also can't connect. You can't well. have relationships. Absolutely. You can't do so many things yeah. because we have this thing. And I think it's in our generation of of self isolation yeah. where we yeah. we we live alone we go in we watch movies alone you don't want people in your space you yeah. it's too much self isolation yeah. so you've really got to and I, I, as you said that i just thought it's in, it comes up in so many aspects you know of our lives even in leadership they say you yeah. know so you self isolate as a leader you know so you never you never have your finger on the pulse you never have your finger exactly. on what is happening in the different departments and if you can't if you can't engage with people in your in your organization or or department then find other leaders at your level that you can engage with so i think that self isolation thing and the often spirit That's is happening across spirit. the board it's cutting it's, across every kind of life us. even as families and us. siblings yeah. we're like me now i'm not talking to this one so i've cut off this exactly. one now now me i'm here i'm not even discussing anything with those guys yeah. that is yeah. something that's hurting us and i think as because it keeps coming up let's let's check where we are where we have offered ourselves yeah. in different yeah. aspects yeah. of life yeah, i think isaac newton said if i can see far it's because i'm standing on the shoulders of, of giants of giants you know the problem with our generation we're just jumping up and down trying to see far uh, as opposed to we're stepping on the, the shoulders, shoulders of those of who've the, gone of before the, us. Those, yeah. Yeah. So, so this often side. spirit, I think it's one of those things. I just realized it just creates mm. us. It, 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 it cuts us off from everything God wants us to mm. be, and it, it kills family. That's why our churches it are not families. Family. That's why our communities are not families because mm. we cut ourselves off. I used to be very amazed when you said, remember when we were in church at Mavuni in the early days, and we were very talkative. So we'd say, "Turn to your neighbor," and the people hate that. I'm like, why would you hate turning to your neighbor? Yeah, because we think that, Jesus. It's about Jesus and me. Me, I've come for Jesus and me. So I can't turn to my neighbor. And speak to my neighbor because we don't understand we think christianity I... is vertical we don't realize it's also horizontal. horizontal you cannot say you love god if you don't love your neighbor yeah and that's what they said this the bible also says i don't know the scripture but it says that if you claim to love god but you cannot love the and you can't see god exactly. but you don't love the brother that you, you can, can see, see. then there's a problem, there's a problem. Okay, so often spirit. so often spirit another one is critical spirit so we're just talking ah, about the barriers that even keep me us, i'm huh? guilty of that one. critical spirit you know uh some of us have a spiritual gift of seeing everything that can and will go wrong and calling it out you know we criticize <laughs> criti- when on social see, media when somebody <laughs> says something you can think of 10 ways that you could, have, you said could, it you could have said it better than them huh? and you just get into a place where you find fault you find In fault everything. with the worship team you find fault oh with how the ushers God. ushered you you find fault with with everything around you with everything people say you're just finding fault yeah. and we actually think it's a good thing we you do know, we actually and that's what you're saying about miriam earlier miriam yes. and aaron it's like you're just they're they're criticizing moses like Kwanza, how did he marry an African? Yes. Like a black Who is skin Zipporah, woman. Exactly. Huh? Who is this yeah. Zipporah woman? Who is Zipporah? Is he okay? He couldn't even make the <laughs> right choice. He didn't even bring her home, you know. <laughs> he didn't even make the right. right choice in marrying who so, he was so marrying. So it's like you start, you just find yeah. fault. It's a fault-finding mm-hmm. spirit. And the social media in our generation, that is Leads it. to that. Everything to that. we find fault. We find fault in the most, you're just shocked, like, what yeah. wow yeah. like they're they think they body shamed somebody on social media yeah. and yeah. The, the, there was there was a whole amazing announcement the person was making but nobody saw we saw that you have added weight and that is what we're going to speak into yeah. my goodness yeah, yeah. so it that, really that i think sad. is another reason why we don't actually end up thriving mm. because in this part of the world we we're really critical. are critical we really are we critical pastor so and so can you see what he did Past, you know, it's prophet so and so. It's like we just think of the negatives. We don't think. You know, of we don't. Positive. We don't think of all that, as you say, the positive things this person has brought. And and I, I was reading this morning when Jesus talks, his disciples are coming and saying, "We saw someone casting out demons in your name," mm. and and we told them to stop. And mm. Jesus is like, "Why did you tell him to, to stop? stop? If the guy is not against us, he's for us." You mm. know. And it's like we are. We're so. It's like he's not in our church. He's not. Yes. In, it's like no. He should be following here. Yeah. This is the body of Christ. You know. Don't 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 that critical spirit. It cuts, and it's in our marriages. Uh, mm, people think I can criticize my husband into Ooh, being the husband he was meant to be. Pastor I M. can Pastor criticize my wife M. into Pastor being. M. You know? It that doesn't is what work. We do. It doesn't work, you know. And it's almost that thing of your negative perspective leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy. It actually doesn't help the situation. Yes. If you think everything is always negative, guess what? It's it always going to be negative. be negative. 
And so that's hurting our churches And that's, that's a very powerful. I don't want to move on from the marriage one because the marriage one is very amazing. I am amazed at how people get married and then they criticize. I don't know what their expectations were. I don't know whether they didn't go and do door. Yeah. I don't understand <laughs> because it's like you're wondering, really, this is what is is yeah. causing a separation in this marriage. It's human. It's human. It's, it's like, human to do oh that. Oh my goodness. You know, it's human to do that. Like, hadn't you thought about it? Hadn't you thought about this? Hadn't you thought about marriage? Hadn't you looked at this whole picture? What, what it's we like do when is, you enter it now is when you start stories. What, what we do is we hand our expectations over to somebody To the else, other person. And we expect to fulfill. them to fulfill. So what does that do? It kills any ability to be gr- grateful. Even the things they're doing, you're like, but that's what a husband is meant to do. Yeah. You know, why that's exactly what he's meant that? to be you know? doing. <laughs> exactly. Fuck, he should have been doing it sooner. So so we destroy our marriages, we destroy our families, we destroy our churches. Because and of we our destroy our spirit. children and as well. And we destroy pastor. our children. It is a conversation yeah. that we're destroying yeah. our yeah. children. Because of criticism. So this... And expectations. And it's, it's so crazy. We're talking about church movements here. But this stuff, is it's life. Because of our critical spirit, we cannot be everything God created us to be. Let me share the last one because I like like I said I was I was trying to go through the five but the last one is a spirit of strife and and this one is also very real in our churches wow. eh? it's a dangerous spirit and I've seen this spirit in our churches and this is a spirit of Absalom this is a guy who is just like he's there to destroy and to create he's there things. to cause people to and and you're going to see this conflict. in our churches causing conflict there's some people wherever they go there's conflict they just have a spiritual gift of stirring up people against each other and you go into a space and you just cause, you know, they, they talk. And as a pastor, you've probably had people talk like this. And, and, and they're talking to other people. They're saying, haven't you noticed people are leaving our church? Uh, haven't you noticed? I mean, don't you feel like Pastor Angie's sermons are not as powerful as they used to be? You know, and, and it's, it's like, why, why is she always talking to about evangelism? Can she talk about something else? Mm-hmm. And just gonganishaing people is a, is a spiritual this word there. It. Just yes. causing people to collide. Huh? Yeah. And there are many people who are like that. And I always say when you have somebody who's talking to you and is critical like that, mm. has a spirit of strife, you cannot join them in that. You cannot join them in you that. You have to walk away you, from that. You have to or walk put away an end or to put it. an end to it. I'm just remembering John, John Maxwell says, are you the kind of leader who, when you find a fire, you come and add more fuel exactly. to the fire? <laughs> or do you try to put out the fire and walk away, Absolutely. you know? So you cannot come and add to yeah. that conversation. I, the spirit of strife is the spirit of Lucifer. It is. Kabisa. It is. For me, whenever I see a spirit of strife in someone, I just that is the devil. That's the devil. That's Call the out devil. the devil in yeah, them. That's the Get thee behind yeah. me, Satan. Like Absolutely. And also, I think it says that where there is strife, anger, envy, jealousy, God is not there. Yeah. So strife yeah. is even one of the things mentioned. When Absolutely. there is strife, God has moved Absolutely. off. He has. He's so, not even so, going to so be there. Sanjay, these are the reasons why our churches are not becoming the movement God God wants them to be. This mm. is the reason why I believe that Christianity in East Africa is not exploding. Mm. We had the East Africa revival. We did. You know, I remember traveling to Nigeria recently and talking to one of the pastors there, and I was just admiring and saying, "My God, that is a movement. This is another movement." And their movements are everywhere. By the way, not one or two or three. There are many mm. churches that have. A hundred branch, are they in a hundred countries? This one is in two hundred countries. This one is, and you're like, how do you guys do this? Mm. And and I remember just being so admiring. And he said, but 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 you Kenyans, you're the ones who brought us the East Africa Imagine. revival. He Imagine. said, mentioning people who are in the revival. I'm like, you you don't know this guy. And I'm like, that guy. Even in Kenya, do people even go to people see him? Do, He's they still don't alive. Even Nobody him. even visits yes, him. Yes, eh? I know. It's like we don't honor fathers. We don't honor. We don't. Uh, we have this sense of every generation thinks it's the hottest thing that ever came mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. and so because of that, I feel like we've killed our ability to experience what. And it starts with our own local congregations. Mm-hmm. It starts with our own marriages. It starts with our own families. Mm-hmm. Just that place of dishonor of cutting away from our fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the at the you know, I I, I want to say this carefully, but. I feel like, like for example, like let's say Nigerians and Ghanaians, they know how to follow. There's just an order in the way that they do their things. Yeah. Even in raising family, in the way they address each other, in the way, I don't know whether they fight, but in the way they'll maybe engage each other. But it's, there's a respect. It's incredible. And you know, like Nigerians, I was watching a wedding um, and how the men, he was like, God, come and prostrate in front of the father, yes. like the parents. The, By the way, it's for real. That's I how know. they do it. I mean, for I've got friends there and I'm like, what? That is already a one, submission. One of, one of my pastors came with me and she's a powerful woman. I mean, just incredible woman. And she was hosted by a Nigerian pastor couple where there's a very powerful woman who was hosting her. When the when the husband came home, she knelt. What this woman did for her husband. My, yes. My, my pastor came and told me, I'm what? confused. I'm yeah. lost. Yes. 
I've never seen she said I'm I'm a different person. I shouldn't even have to preach to me. I just yeah. saw how she treated her husband. I said no wonder I'm having issues in my mind. Yes, because I'm able to treat my oh. husband. There's a respect, there's a way, there's a way they they talk to each other. There's a way they address each other. And then I feel it flows through the whole community. It flows in yeah. church, it flows yeah. at home. Yeah. They don't shout at each other. They I mean, I don't, there's a way they relate with each other that we need to learn. And the spirit of the age is against that. So we need to be able to ask ourselves who do we want to be? Do we want to be Christians who make the difference that God calls us to be? And I believe there's hope. You I know? believe for me I really I look I at my culture and I see hope. Yeah. I think this generation mm. is tired of being an orphan generation. Yeah, good. We're tired of not having fathers. Yep. I find young people today they're so oh, hungry. Oh, definitely. Like I get people in their 20s mm. calling me and they're mm. asking for advice in a way that I never would see people in my in my mm. time asking. Mm. I feel like people are hungry for fatherhood today in yeah, a way that wasn't are. there before. They are. And I think also it's because because I've noticed that generation. I remember once okay, I think I'll say maybe they're they're millennials, but I remember once um they have friends wanted to go on a trip or something and and they were asked which chaperone they want and they wanted me. Of course the trip didn't happen because out there is like there's no way I'm going with my mother. But I felt like they they lack that. They, they lack, lack somebody to give yeah. them direction and guidance and therefore there's a way that they thrive yeah. when they get the leadership and, and the that's direction. why they hope for us yes, because that's I feel like we're, we've gotten to the place where we can yeah. see the emptiness of that lack of fatherhood yeah. we can see it and being independent and i think especially the younger generation they want something different mm. and yeah. so i believe god is going yeah. to raise movements amen in our generation we're going to see global christianity coming out of east africa we're going to see our people amen. starting movements amen. and initiatives that go across the world amen and this is who we are created to be amen yeah. amen i'm very excited and i know i'm birthing a movement amen. so i know we are going <laughs> the mavuno movement we are on the way amen. and i know there are many other movements that you're birthing and so thank you so much for the barriers we're going to come back like i said uh, we have two more to do in this series so god bless and i hope you're enjoying it and engage with us and and give us your comments and your feedback God bless.